Excellent. Hey everyone, and welcome to Paul's Hardware. I am doing a build video today. That's right. Uh, just just like a regular build video. There's no modding going on or customization. I'm using off-the-shelf parts. But this one's been kind of a long time coming because I actually got this uh, Be Quiet Silent Base 800 case well a few months ago now, and I've been planning a build in it. So I've got the the case here, and I'm going to kind of focus on the case for this video, but I also, of course, have some parts from Gigabyte, as well as the rest of the components. So I'm going to start off, kind of run down each one of these, tell you what I'm using this for and why I chose each part. I'm going to be using this for live streaming, by the way. I'm going to go ahead and do a full build. I'll kind of time lapse through all that. And then at the end, I'm going to come back and uh, give some feedback on the build experience in the Be Quiet Silent Base 800 case, as well as my experience with some of the other components I've used today. So four parts, of course, I started out this build with the Silent Base 800 and the uh, Straight Power 10 700 watt, both from Be Quiet. So I'm going to come back to those and give you guys a closer look. Uh, the graphics card is right here, and this is from Gigabyte. This is their G1 Gaming uh, GeForce GTX 960. So that means it looks pretty high-end because it's the G1 Gaming series. So it looks very similar to their 970 and their 980. Um, I don't necessarily need a ton of graphics horsepower for this build in particular. That said, there's a chance I might swap this out in the future with something a little bit more powerful. But for the time being, what I'm actually going to be doing is feeding video over to this system via capture card. So I'll be playing on a couple water-cooled Gigabyte GTX 980 G1 gaming cards from, from the Arctic Panther build. Moving along though, we also from Gigabyte have the Z97X SoC. You might have seen this in my first five things I do when I'm shopping for a motherboard video. Uh, this is a Z97 board, it's also very orange and it's going to match very well. Also full featured board, so uh, should get the job done. CPU at the center is going to be an i7-4770K. I don't know if anyone is like using this uh, video as a build guide, but uh, if you're buying new, I would get a 4790K. The 4770K I already had, so I didn't really feel like it was important to buy the 4790K just for the sake of this. Anyway, I did that um, since it's a streaming system, I wanted the quad core plus the hyper threading. For memory, I have repurposed a kit that I already had. This is an 8 gig, 2 by 4 gig kit of uh, Corsair Vengeance. It's just DDR3 1600. Uh, for an SSD, I have an Intel 240 gig. I, I, I totally I forget the model of this. It's a model of this SSD. One of those ones from Intel that, like, it's very simple in design. Anyway, this is a Sandforce controlled SSD, and again, that one's kind of repurposed from another system. I've had I've had that one for a little bit. Um, a couple of little add-on items here. I, of course, have this Blackmagic uh, capture card. This is the same card I've been using that we've been using to stream uh, awesome hardware and that sort of thing. So I'm going to be popping that into this system since it will be dedicated for streaming. It will also finally have a bit more of a home. And then lastly, I'm going to be throwing in this uh, Thermaltake Water 2.0 uh, CPU cooler, since I, I, there's actually not even a CPU cooler in this box, not even a stock one. <laughs> I used it for something else. Uh, so this also has already been used, but I'm going to be cleaning it off and then installing it to keep the CPU cool and maybe do a little bit of overclocking as well, since it's the Super Overclock Z97X motherboard. So here's a closer look at the power supply. This is a Be Quiet Straight Power 10. This is uh, pretty much everything that comes with it. Power cable, of course. It is uh, semi-modular, so you get these cables. I will say the blue plugs are not necessarily my super favorite, but uh, there's no side panel window on this case, so you're not going to be seeing too much of that. But anyway, there's your modular cables side by side. You do have a always attached 24-pin main uh, motherboard power connector, so that one is always stuck on there, but um, you, you're probably going to need that, so not a huge deal. Modular connection points are down here. They're all clearly labeled. On the top you have a large Be Quiet fan, and um, it is a quiet fan. It just it doesn't just say Be Quiet on there. Some metal grilling across the top, and then other than that, a pretty uh, flat black finish. Be Quiet logo on that side. Nothing on the bottom. Not a whole lot going on on that side. And then there's your power chart and all that good stuff. So uh, this does have three rails, two 18 amp and one 22 amp. So bear that in mind if you're uh, looking for something for something like, I don't know, say an R9 295X2. Other than that though, it is very efficient, uh, 80 plus gold rated and uh, a pretty decent price for that. And uh, again, this is a 700 watt model and uh, this should get us by just fine. Other than that though, our case uh, requires some little bit of assembly. I did get it out of the box there, but let me pop these uh, feet on the bottom so I can stand it up a bit more stably, and then we'll look at that. These little feet. Just 
kind of pop in like that. And here's a quick look at the case before I start jumping in with the build itself. You can see this one has orange trim. It's also available with a, kind of a gray or silver trim and black. Interior is nice and spacious. It has some distinctive kind of orange markings inside as well as out. Uh, it has a swinging door on the front that you can open up to reveal your five and a quarter inch expansion bays. Front panel also will pop off like so. Uh, it's got some rubber protection on there. You can see you got a couple 140 millimeter B clad fans in the front. This is 120 that comes pre-installed in the back. Uh, more features after I actually put hardware in this one. So I'm gonna get going. I began to build, confident in the decisions I had made for the parts in my epic orange streaming system. Little did I know how wrong I actually was. But that can wait because it's time to say thank you to this video's sponsor, lynda.com. Let me ask you this, what other website is dedicated to making you smarter? If you didn't already know, lynda.com is an online learning platform with over 3,000 on-demand video courses to help you strengthen your business, technology, and creative skills. And via this sponsorship promotion, you can get a 10-day free trial. That is absolutely correct. And you can do this simply by visiting lynda.com slash Paul. Now, I can honestly say that I am a better video editor now, thanks to lynda.com, but I talk about that all the time. So why don't you guys go ahead and learn something else on Lynda, like uh, audio and music software, for example. Go ahead and learn Audacity, Audition, Cubase, FL Studio, GarageBand, Logic Pro, Pro Tools, and Reason, just to name a few of the courses they have on there, and then use those skills to make me some better background music. Maybe, maybe class this place up a little bit. What do you think? If you do want to do this, go ahead and click the sponsor link in this video's description, or visit lynda.com slash paul. But back to my cliffhanger from before, it was something about my overconfidence being my undoing, I believe, and I will say that things did not go quite as smoothly as I would have liked with this build. My main dilemma was the CPU cooler, of course, and since I don't actually have one of Be Quiet's excellent air coolers around for this build, I went with an all-in-one instead. Now, I also wanted to keep the rad and the fans in this lower chamber down here rather than the uh, upper area up here because this top panel can restrict some of the airflow and I wanted to avoid that if possible. Now you probably saw that my first planned unit was the Thermaltake Water 2.0, a cooler with a 240 millimeter radiator that is thicker than most, which meant that I didn't have quite enough clearance for the fans and the radiator, uh, which conflicted with my RAM slots. Now another point to make here is that my older model Corsair Vengeance memory has 
kind of absurdly tall heat spreaders, which limited my options a bit further. I probably could have fit the Water 2.0 with some low or lower profile dims in there, but um, I gotta work with what I have. So next I took a shot at installing the Corsair H110, a larger 280 millimeter all-in-one unit with a thinner radiator. And here again, I probably could have made it work by removing the front optical drive cage, um, but maybe planning ahead a bit more too, but uh, spacing wise, you really do run out of room quickly if you don't wanna put the fans in the top area up above, which I didn't wanna do. So I scrapped the H110 plans as well. Third time was a charm though, I pulled the Cooler Master Neptune 240M out of another system and it fit in perfectly with the fans mounted and all, so the biggest hurdle of this build was overcome. Everything else went very smoothly, I'm happy to say, and after some work getting all the parts in place, wrangling the cables, I had the finished build that you now see before you. I'm gonna focus on the Straight Power 10 700 watt power supply again for just a moment. This guy got the job done. I like 80 plus gold units for the efficiency at a lower price than you often pay for the premium that you have to pay for platinum units. 700 watts gives some good headroom and you can even handle two-way GPU configurations with this power supply depending on the graphics card, of course. And the housing has a nice finish and a Be Quiet embossed logo on the side and a very quiet fan as well. Partially modular designs are helpful too, but on the downside, the cables just aren't really all that attractive. They suffer from the multicolored wiring barely hidden by loose sleeving problem that so many PSUs suffer from, and there's just no hiding the burst of color at the end of the 24 pin connector. The fact that the PEG connectors have this kind of bright blue translucent six plus two pin connectors was also a little bit baffling to me. It really stands out, I'll be honest. I'd recommend some sleeved extensions for this power supply if, it's, if aesthetics are a concern for you, of course. Lastly, it is a multi-rail design with four 12 volt rails on the 700 watt model, which is fine for most situations, except those unique ones, like when you're using an AMD R9 295X2, for example, or a similar GPU that requires a lot of amps on a single rail to provide enough juice on the associated connector. So bear that in mind. Moving on to the Silent Base 800 case though, on the plus side, I really do like the design. It's quite pleasing to look at, and it has a tall, kind of skinny look to it uh, if you're viewing it from the front. It's also very quiet, and the sound dampening and the padding material throughout is high quality and does a really good job reducing internal noise. I also like the included fans. Uh, 240 millimeters at the front and the 120 at the back give you adequate airflow for most builds, and it kind of emphasizes positive air fresh pressure by having those two uh, large intake fans, which is almost always preferred. I also had plenty of room for all of my hardware, with the exception of the radiator issues I already mentioned. And one other minor note is that I had to remove the middle drive cage up here in order to fit my Gigabyte GTX 960, which is a pretty long graphics card for today's market. I also wanted to point out that the side panels, which are held by catches on the top and bottom edges, uh, which isn't a design that I usually prefer. I, I usually actually find it kind of tiring putting the panels on and taking them off, but uh, thanks to the way the panels are actually designed, they're a bit thicker thanks to the rolled edges. The edges wrap around and they become flush with the rest of the case, so putting it on and taking it off is actually a bit easier than other panels that use this design. On the negative side for the SB800, I have to say that the panel up on top really does bring up some concerns for airflow, specifically if you're using a radiator up there, and bringing those radiator fans inside the motherboard chamber can be awkward depending on the hardware configuration in there and what memory you have, what motherboard you have, of course. Now, if you've got a standard 240 millimeter radiator like mine, you'll probably be okay. Um, but I also had some disappointment with a damaged on arrival piece, actually. The front cover, right up here, for the uh, 140 intakes, had a broken plastic tab at the bottom. The tab broken piece is actually on the case itself. Uh, below that you also have, yeah, see that broke? The plastic bit broke. Fortunately, it still stays on okay when I put it on, but it looks pretty bad when I pop it off. I have to say that I've seen this happen on quite a few cases, Corsair, I'm looking at you right here, and I would love to see a solution for these removable front panels that doesn't rely on an easily breakable tiny plastic tab for a hinge. All that said though, I'm happy to say that the Silent Base 800 gets the job done very well. It looks good, it fits all the hardware, there's modularity in the drive cages and the side intakes on the panels, and yes, it remains very quiet with the system up and running, so it definitely lives up to its name. 
Now I wanted this build to look good inside and out, even if there's no side panel window, which is why I chose the Gigabyte Z97X SoC, because it's orange black, it matches so well, and the, G, uh, and the G1 Gaming GTX 960. And I suppose since I'm making this video, there's also plenty of enough opportunity for you guys to appreciate it with the side panel off. But what do you guys think? Would you be interested in a windowed side panel version of the Silent Base 800 if Be Quiet made it? Also, let me know what you think of my build here in general. You can talk about all these things down in the comment section down below. Also, don't forget to hit the like button while you're down there. Check the description for links to my t-shirt store. You can buy a shirt like this one, as well as my Amazon affiliate code, which you can click before you check out at Amazon. That helps me out a ton. And of course, there's gonna be links to the case and the power supply and all the other parts in here that you might want to click on as well. And lastly, of course, as always, thanks for watching.